In the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! What's up, everybody? My name is Keith, and somehow you have accidentally clicked on a YouTube show about Playmates Star Trek toys. Uh, let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Keith. I'm a Star Trek nerd. Been forever. It was in the intro. But uh, let me introduce my co-host, Mike and Deglio. How's it going, buddy? It's going all right. I'm always happy to join you in a interesting endeavor and this is absolutely <laughs> that i want to say right up fr right up front keith i am yeah. not a star trek guy never no. been a star trek guy but i do love toys to this very day if i walk into a walmart a target any sort of establishment i go right to the toy owl first uh, growing up action figures were my life they were my escape and so when you said hey let's look at action figures on the internet i thought yeah that's what we yeah. should do yeah, let's look at some action figures. So uh, this show is going to be specifically about the Playmates series of Star Trek action figures, which began in 92 and uh, went through about 1999. And we are talking about the four and a half inch scale figures um, that began with series one of the next gen figures. Uh, so we're going to talk all about series one. Eventually, we're going to get through, hopefully, all of the figures of it. But before I talk about the Playmates figures, let me just give you a quick rundown about Playmates itself. Uh, it began in 1966, focusing on uh, dolls of all nation and the Shirley dolls. Uh, it is in 1978, it established a Boston operation. Uh, they did some preschool toys called Little Playmates. I don't know if you remember those. Uh, 1981, they got their first Disney license. But in 1988, was its big breakout, certainly for me, and I bet for you, because they released the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, yes. action figures. You had turtles, yeah? Uh, had almost all the turtles. In fact, one of the only whoopins I ever got in my life was because we were at a Toys R Us, Keith, and I saw mm -hmm. that they had the the, uh, the, 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 tech, the Technodrome, which was like the big $100 oh, play yeah. set uh environment and i wanted it bad and i threw a fit because my mom i didn't quite understand that a hundred dollars was a lot of money so i threw uh -huh. me a fit and Especially my mom in 1988. Uh, oh yeah and my mom threw me a uh hit if you will <laughs> oh no she carried me right out of that toys r us uh, socking away the whole time so i oh. got my own uh play set that day <laughs> <laughs> well meanwhile in 1988 in the star trek world the first action figures from the next generation were actually produced by a company called Galoob. And they were a little bit smaller than the four inches. I, I have them back there. I, I, I'm not going to get them because I don't, I'm not going to stand up. Uh, so, but Playmates didn't assume the Star Trek license until 1992, okay. which is what is what we're going to be looking at the first series that came out in 1992. Now in the big picture, Galoob actually put out by my non-scientific count and, Correct me below in the comments, because Lord knows somebody will, because I will be wrong. But according to my count and my spreadsheet, there are 283 different figures in this series. Uh, I personally have 197 of them so far, and I have been collecting them seriously for the last uh, two or three years. I guess. Um, and it's been it's been really fun. If you look behind me there, that center bookshelf is all of the figures there. We will show them uh, as we go forward. A uh, couple of other interesting thing about this series. Uh, they are all individually numbered. Playmates realized that there was a lot more money going to nerd collectors like mm -hmm. us than making them just for kids which is why they're all individually numbered. In fact, you know what? Why don't we hop over to the toy cam and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, folks, here on the live toy cam, I have here this action figure of Worf and I'm gonna show you. He has a, a numbered number, <laughs> numbered number, 
on his foot there. I don't know if you can quite see it, but this is number 65,855. And uh, as we go through this, we will find out that there were lots of different runs um, of the toys. So these initial ones came out. There's hundred, hundreds of thousands of them. Some of them got much more limited edition, uh, almost to the point of insanity, which pretty much killed the line of toys because it was almost impossible to get all of them. So I already know that this adventure, for me, is set up for failure. Well, uh, Keith, I, I, I don't want to speak for our audience, which hopefully will there will be one. Uh, I sure and I, so. I assume that there are plenty of people interested in Star Trek action figures and toys. You know, perhaps when we get to, uh, maybe once, once we cycle through your entire collection and we, mm -hmm. uh, we have a list of those that you have yet to receive, perhaps we can elicit some feedback from our audience, either get a some B-roll that we can show so we can at least get, discuss through those uh, holes mm -hmm. in the collection. Well, I'm still going to be working on it. You know, I, as I don't we want to take that process. away from you. I'm just I, saying. No, don't take away my toys. Well, and in fact, actually, I can tease this. We might uh, do some unboxings. If I get mm. a good lot from eBay, maybe we can do an unboxing on the toy cam. We'll see. Yeah, and we oh. want to have a discussion with you. We want to talk about the toys. I want to give a upfront Warning that I am going to give my opinions about the toys and about Star Trek never disrespectfully. I just am <laughs> all about the figures because what I used to do with the toys, a lot of people used to play in the in the world of the toy, right? You'd do a Star Trek episode. I never was like that. I made them fight and wrestle and the different universes of toys all came together in my imagination. So I want to hear oh, how you guys verse. utilized your toys. Did you take them out of the box? How did it all work? Uh, well, let's, that is a great segue, actually, because before we talk about the individual characters of the series one, let's talk about that box. And let's go back to the toy cam. Toy cam! Toy cam! And take a look at what the series one boxes looked like. Now, you'll see here I have a duplicate that I did not take out of the box. And, you know, toy purists come at me. But mm -hmm. because I want to display them on my on my display wall behind me here, I will take them out of the box, at least one of each figure to get on the display. Do you always know. purchase two or do you is, or no. is, that, is that new? Typically, I purchase them in lots from eBay. So I'll just get a whole bunch of I look for lots that have as many of uh, the figures that I don't have. And then with that will come a whole bunch, whole bunch of duplicates. So I have a huge box of duplicates. Okay. Um, but anyway, so if you look at the first series boxes, uh, they had a basic, you know, your basic toy. It came with a lot of extra little, uh, little plastic nonsense to, that came with the figure. Uh, they all came with their own base uh, for them to stand up on because they don't all, they don't all stand up well on their own. Um, and a whole bunch of like little random plastic uh, crap that were probably all choking hazards mm -hmm. and uh, were of various levels of detail. This is actually a pretty good one. It's got the, see the back of the box. That's where I always enjoy to see that usually get to see the entire series, right? OK, yeah. So here we are. It's a little preview about what you're going to see. Uh, this is the first series It came with a little uh, card of details about the character. Some of it canon, some of it not. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's all basic stuff. These were figures were not super expensive when they came out. Um, they were all, uh, you know, priced for kids. So, for, you know, you'd be getting this thing for five bucks, um, at your, uh, at your KB toys, which is always my favorite place to go. Um, and it's where, uh, as, where a kid can be a kid, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I found so many fun things in KB's toys. Anyway, we will get, <laughs> we'll talk about that. Okay, let's start with our first figure from TNG Series 1. And where do you start with anything Star Trek? You start with Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Of course, here he is, played by the legendary Patrick Stewart. And Playmates figure 6011 is actually Picard wearing his Picardigan, not his regular Starfleet uniform. Now, this was an alternate outfit given just to the captains and it first appeared in uh next gen season five episode two darmok the famous episode and you'll see here 
that this is version 1.0 of the Picardigan, where you have sort of a leather and suede with detailing on the on the shoulders and uh, at the cuff. It eventually developed into being made out of the same material as the rest of the uniform. And I think it looks better than this sort of weird, like punk Picard version. Uh, but the figure also had all of that detailing from the first draft of the Picardigan. And you'll note a lot with the action figures, you're going to see the first draft of stuff because the figures take a long time to develop. And so the minute you have the idea for the uniform, you have to send the prototypes to the toy folks to make it. And so sometimes you'll see things that didn't actually make it on screen. We're going to get there when we get to the uh, Star Trek Generations figures which they uh, produced that movie literally the week after filming the series finale. And they were going to introduce new uniforms that were sort of halfway between Next Gen and the Wrath of Khan uniforms with the wraparound. And uh, so they produced all the figures for that line, and then they scrapped it after the first couple of days of filming and went back to their regular uniforms. So the only place you can see those uniforms are on these action figures, but we'll get to them later. Uh, what do you think of Picard here? Uh, I've always thought Picard was such a cool character, despite him being cast a little bit older. And I think that that's reflected here. What I'm really digging is the texturing. Uh, you can yeah. see sort of some waviness in the back of his Picardigan. And also the ruffles have ridges on the top leather layer, <laughs> as well as the bottoming. It's really cool. He's Which for a crunchier captain. Yeah, they really went with like a baggy cargo pant type of situation here. I wonder if that's going to be all the way through this first kind of line, or if that was specific here. And did he wear boots like that? What's Talk to me about the footwear. Well, they they wore boots similar to that. The weird sort of bell-bottomy cuff you rarely saw, and I don't think we saw it much um, in later seasons. You'll see on some of the figures, you have a little detailing with a with a, a stripe of the color of the uniform at the bottom of the, um, uh, or at the top of the boot. We rarely saw it on screen. Um, but these, what Picard's wearing here with a bell-bottom deal, that's a throwback to the original series, where all mm -hmm. their pants were cuffed like that, which is uh, odd. Yeah, I really also think it's a uh, it's it's a great likeness. Generally, the I mean, the hair gives a, is a dead giveaway, but the sculpting is really well done on his face. It looks just like him, and uh, you know his. Oh, I can see some veins in his hand there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. The level of detail is really really good, and I think there's there's two levels of details that Playmates really focused on. One was just uh, making the figures look lifelike, uh, and and, and you know, they're just good. They're they're mostly to scale and they look like the actors portraying it. But there's also the level of detail of the Star Trek canon because when they put these figures out, they knew that nerds like us were going to be collecting and talking about these things. And if they screwed up a piece of this, we'd know and they'd hear about it and it would make us less likely to continue collecting if they were making mistakes. And it's clear they knew they had something here. Um, as a collectible item right from the very beginning. So let us move forward in the line and talk about model number 6012, Commander Data. Of course, played by Brent Spiner. And you'll see here, he is wearing his Season 3 and Beyond Starfleet uniform. In Season 1 and 2, they had these weird, tight, clingy jumpsuits um, that had an extra stripe on the shoulders. But mainly, it was a problem for the actors because you couldn't really get in and out of it easily because it was not uh, cut at the waist. Uh, so just to use the bathroom became like a huge problem. And it was clingy and, and just like, it left very little to the imagination, so the actors were really happy uh, to get new uniforms reflected here on screen that were a, sort of like a, a tunic, a shirt, and a pair of pants, which just made their lives a lot easier. Uh, you'll also notice, just canon-wise, that the these uniforms continue to develop. Uh, it, it, they didn't arrive fully formed in the beginning of season three. You see some of the details grow as the series went on. Uh, some of the earlier uh, episodes, they had seams going down the front, which, as you can see in this uh, picture from Data in uh, 403 Brothers, 
they've removed the seams and they've also added a collar around the neck, uh, which I think really brings this particular uniform to the classic next gen uh, uniform. And when series one of the Playmates dolls were released, it was in 1992 when next gen was already, it was just starting season six. So we were pretty much in the fully formed version of these uniforms um, when they designed these toys. Now, one last thing I will say before I let you jump in on data is that this data figure had an interesting little detail and that is it had comp compartments which opened up to show some of the uh wiring and technology within data who was an android and so you could open up a panel on his back and open up a panel on his forearm and uh just really inter interesting and intricate little details uh to add for a toy you could buy for five bucks that's cool i'm also noticing they changed the pants up here. They're definitely not the baggy cargo pant type they had on that Picard figure we looked at. Although I'm looking at the the kind of exposed triangle to show the boot stirrup right. type scenario. Is that something we would see in the episodes or is that uh, a creative license detail? No, we, we would see it sometimes. We rarely saw their feet on the show. Um, but, uh, you know, folks, if you can send uh, on, on YouTube or and you can email us um, – look at my star trek toys at gmail.com send us a screenshot of one of their feet showing this little detail because i'm not 100 percent sure how often if ever we saw that uh they definitely got the hair right the the facial sculpture isn't as precise as the picard but there's only so much you can do and i will note that this one is arms look a little bizarre like a little long or big maybe but it could be the way you have it you have it posed here well, it, it it's a little jacked for Brent Spiner. No, no offense, Brent. Uh, <laughs> neither am I. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, he's he's a little bulky. But you know, they had to use that had to probably use that torso for a whole bunch of other figures too. So they wanted right, to right. sort of split it in the middle. And uh, you know, Lord knows if everyone anyone ever makes an action figure of me, I want to be cut because in real life, it, oh, it's yeah, just not bulk a thing. me up. He man me to the nines. Yeah. For sure. All right. Speaking of jacked, peak, speaking of bulked up, let's take a look at 6013 Lieutenant Worf. Yeah. Here, of course, portrayed by Michael Dorn, who would, uh, I think, do more episodes of Star Trek than anybody else in history because he he hopped over to DS9 after Next Gen was done. Um, same deal with the uniform. This is the, uh, I guess, season five plus uniform uh i guess no season four because this screenshot is from 426 redemption part one the season finale a uh, couple other things about Worf here the sash that he is wearing uh in canon that's known as a baldric and this is actually the second version of the baldric that Worf wore this is sort of the silver chain mail kind of a deal uh the original one which you saw in season one when he was wearing a red command division um, uniform before Tasha Yart died and he took her place. Spoiler alert. Uh, but the original Baldrick was more of a fabric and it was gold and uh, it had like little fringe. It was a little silly. This is a much cooler uh, sash for him to wear. But the uh, the story is, and I don't know if it's true, is that the that original Baldrick was stolen after season one and they were forced to develop a new one. So... Who knows if that's true, but it's an interesting story. And the last thing I'll say about this is that we are, uh, you see his hair. He's in his sort of like Pantene Pro V page boy uh, <laughs> haircut. Very Klingon, very Klingon, which he had uh, in the middle of next gen. It, he started originally with a with sort of a pixie cut. It was short and then it grew throughout the series. And this was his very odd blown out silly hair uh before he eventually grew it out into a ponytail which made a great deal more sense for the character um so this is sort of mid wharf uh hair going on so what do you think mike i think this the wharf character definitely fits this more uh, he-man scale i'll call it right. uh, he's got he's he doesn't have the sort of bulging pectorals you'd see there but that arms the 
the arms definitely seem to fit the character a little bit more. He's got that giant kind of man claw hand. I don't remember him being so so physically dominant. He could be, but I don't, I don't remember like battling. Uh, being, well, he being... certainly didn't have hands wildly out of proportion with the rest <laughs> of his body. <laughs> Yeah, Michael Dorn just has hands. His left hand there does seem a little not safe for work. I'm sure he was holding some sort of a club in his accoutrement, but it definitely looks a little bit matey. Oh, yeah, it sure does look like he's trying to hold a, a Klingon club of some sort. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, that's a uh, I mean, I think he's trying to do like a punch or something, but it, it's unfortunate when you stare yeah, at it, it for too long. I don't pick that up as a kid, but as a grown up, it, it jump it, it, it tends to jump out. Look, there's, you know, he he was the only Klingon on the ship. There, yeah, you know, he had a lot of extra time. Uh, <laughs> he did have that kid, though. He did, yeah. Well, Alexander, his kid, who, uh, don't worry, there is an Alexander figure, whether it, you wanted it, it or not. Yeah, is it insufferable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that character uh, was, uh, people have a lot of opinions on the character of Alexander. I think they explored some interesting things, but yeah, he was, he was, uh, it was kind of annoying, but don't worry. Uh, if you have all ever wanted to know what a Alexander figure wearing a cowboy outfit would look like, stay tuned. Hey, all should right. we go back in time numerically and go to number one now? See go to number there? one. Oh, see, see what I did? It's uh, it's that cutting Star <laughs> Trek that I didn't watch comedy that I think everyone's really going to be tuning in for. Yes, I can see our subscriber listing, uh, go ahead, which which right now isn't even one. So yeah, That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but we have to have one to lose one. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yes, let's talk about 6014 Battle Damaged Commander William Riker, oh. the first officer of the Enterprise, of course, uh, portrayed by Jonathan Frakes. And uh, here we are in season three plus uniform. Uh, but you'll note here, it is distressed like he's been attacked by a Gorn or something. Uh, and I tried to find an episode of next gen that had this sort of damage to his uniform and I couldn't find one. Hmm. Uh, we sort of got close in uh, 202 when silence has lease. You remember the, where he's training with Worf on the holodeck and things get a little hairy, but You'll note that was in the season two uniform, not this uniform. So, uh, folks, if you know of a, of an episode where his uniform gets cut like this, let us know. Leave us a leave us a note down below, and we will happily make a correction. But I think what they were going for was trying to make Riker the sort of action character, the guy who got gotten fights. And uh, you'll, if you're an original series fan, you'll note that. Normally, that character who went down to the planet and he fought the guys and he spent time with the ladies, you know what I mean? Uh, that was usually Captain Kirk, uh, the William Shatner. But for Next Gen, they added a, sort of a little wrinkle where Riker wouldn't allow Picard to go on away missions and uh, put himself at risk the way we saw Kirk almost dying every 10 seconds. So they were sort of uh, trying to make Riker the, the the action guy. So I think that's what they're trying to do here with this figure. Um, one other thing to note, which has been true of several of these uh, figures in the first line, is you see a little box there for the tricorder, which was usually included. In fact, I can show you. Let's hop over to Toy Cam. Toy Cam! Toy Cam! Where we can take a look at what was in the Riker Mm. box and you can see yes there is a tricorder right there you have a tricorder to the right here you have a pad which was oops you can't see what i'm doing there's the pad there which was kind of the precursor to the you get iPad. a lot of cool stuff you get a lot of gear yeah you uh star trek actually kind of invented the ipad because they all had one uh before that was ever a technology although Stupid story. I don't know why I'm talking about it, but uh, you'll note with the with all of the pads, they could conceive of an iPad, and you have access to you know video and every and books and everything all all in this one little tiny little you know piece of paper deal. But they couldn't conceive of storing more than one book or more than <laughs> one thing on the pad. So if somebody was busy on the Enterprise, they had a stack of like six of them, as opposed to just having one with six files. Well, all that uh, stuff makes me think that it's a bit of an explanation for 
the slightly oversized hands on many of these figures because they had to. You have to be able to hold your choking hazard. Well, I've... <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, we, you had the phasers there and these boxes and, um, yeah, so you definitely needed that. What did they, what is that weird thing? <laughs> so it, if you go back to toy cam, right, you see, hold on, let me get, okay, you see that thing? Yeah. It's like a, is it a sword of Damocles? It, it is billed as a directional UV source used on away missions to create visible light and heat. Oh. Uh, so I, I, they felt obligated to put like six or seven choking hazards in every box. And some of them made sense and some of them didn't. Now, uh, I, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I'm pretty confident that those little accoutrements are probably part and parcel with, you know, if, if things are on, if, if you've got your boxed pristine right. cartons, right? All the corners are intact. I'm sure those are right. top of the line. Right. When you get into the unboxed, market i'm sure if you've got all of the little bits and goobles uh it, it increases value for collecting yeah <laughs> yeah sort of i mean i think there's a in in collecting purists please comment below and and, and yes, correct for sure we want to uh, learn too I, that's another part of this i want to yeah i mean stuff. but you know I, I think once you take it out of the box you've taken it out of the box <laughs> and that's and that's ninety percent of the collectible value, um, unless you're doing for me. Well, I'm I'm collecting for display. I'm not I'm not trying to make money off of it. I'm not trying to keep the. I'm not trying to sell them later. I I want right. to look at them, um, and so when I go on eBay and I buy lots of them, sometimes they'll have the the little doodads and sometimes they don't. I, I need to order a huge collection of just the stands, because I have you know, 200 figures and only about a hundred stands, um, which you can do, you can find those on eBay. Uh, so I, I will eventually get to it. Uh, and I actually, because, you know, I'm that guy who takes them out of the box. I have an entire giant box filled with all of the assorted doodads from a whole mess of them because I'm not, I, I'm not displaying them because most of them are, are silly, just cheap pieces of plastic and, I uh, don't need a whole mess of other things for my cat to knock down. Okay, well, we have gotten through part one of TNG Series 1. We are going to continue with part two in the next episode. So if you enjoyed this, just hop on to the next episode. But before you do, do us the annoying thing that everybody has to say on every YouTube video. And I roll my eyes every time, but here it is. Do us a favor, like and subscribe if you enjoy what we do. Uh, send a link. Let us let folks know about it. We really appreciate it. Smash uh, if, that bell icon. I think they uh, say the kids say. <laughs> kids, we are too old. We are too old for like and subscribe. We are old enough to be collecting '90s action figures, but we are too old. We're too, too old, old to play with action figures on the internet. I think. <laughs> but here we are. But here we are. If you would like to reach out to us directly, you can email us at lookatmystartrektoys at gmail.com, all one word. You can also find a lot of this cool stuff up on our Instagram, Star Trek Toys, just at Star Trek Toys. I can't believe we got it. So that's it, folks. Check out episode part two uh, coming up soon. We will be doing these, uh, you know, as we do them. Look at my Star Trek Toys!